Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains that ARM has released a whole bunch of new CPU and GPU designs. In this video, we're looking at the new GPU designs. That's the Immortalis G715, the Mali G715 and the Mali G615. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now basically, I said there were three different GPUs, the 615, the 715, and the Immortalis uh, G715, but basically they are the same GPU across the board. However, there are some feature and uh, performance differences amongst them. So really, I'm gonna be concentrating on the Immortalis G715 and just mention the differences about the G Mali G715 and the Mali G615. Now you may have noticed a new name, Immortalis, the Immortalis G715, and that makes it distinct from the Mali G715 and the Mali G615 because in the Immortalis you get ray tracing and variable rate shading. So those are two features we're definitely going to have to take a look at. Now I hope you had a chance to look at the video about the new CPUs from ARM, that's the Cortis X3, the A715 and the refresh of the A510 and I showed this slide in that video as well. If you take the system as a whole, a smartphone with the new CPU cores and the new GPU cores, a smartphone that we're going to see in 2023, you're going to see an average of a 28% uplift in performance, that's across CPU and GPU, 16% reduction in power, and less uh, RAM traffic, and of course, accessing the RAM costs energy and also slows down performance. So overall, take the thing as a system, we look at the Immortalis fits in with the CPU cores, and to give this overall uplift of 28% in performance. Now the Immortalis G715 is the fourth generation of the Valhall architecture and I've covered that in detail, particularly when I've looked at the previous generations of GPUs. So overall there's a 15% in performance improvement across the board uh, because of what they've done to the micro architectures. There is ray tracing and variable rate shading in the top end and there is improvements for machine learning in this next generation. And so when you look at the difference here, the Immortalis has got ray tracing, variable rate shading, and has got 10 or more cores. Whereas the Mali G715, while it offers variable shape rate shading, it has either seven to nine cores, or if it's less than seven cores, then it has to be called a Mali G615. So basically the difference is this, is the Immortalis G715 has got ray tracing and lots of cores, 10 cores or more. The other two don't have the ray tracing uh, and they uh, have less number of cores and the number of cores determines the name. An interesting point is you can technically have ray tracing in those cores, but it probably isn't recommended because it doesn't have enough cores to cope with it. So this is hardware based uh, ray tracing and it is available inside of the Immortalis G715. It supports the Vulkan ray tracing uh, API, nothing available in OpenGLES, but that's by design because Vulkan is the future and that's where the ray tracing uh, stuff is included. Now, hardware ray tracing in itself is kind of a kind of a gelatinous term. It could mean absolutely anything. Now, I do have a video here on this channel explaining about the different levels that are available when it comes to hardware ray tracing. Is it really hardware ray tracing? Is it software ray tracing? Is it kind of a fudge? But here in the Immortage G711, we have the first real hardware-based ray tracing. And what that means is there are some structures that can be used and targeted inside the hardware that let the software know if a particular array, remember this is ray tracing, so you send out a array from the eye, see where it goes, it can tell you where it hits and what kind of object in your structure of all the things that are going on in this, in the scene, what it actually hits. Now there are further optimizations that can be done for ray tracing called bounded volume hierarchies. Now that's not supported inside of the Immortage G715, but in truth, it isn't really supported in hardware in very many other places either. So this is the first level of uh, hardware ray tracing, and you actually get only a 4% increase in the size of the GPU cores to actually implement this stuff in it. So that's a really good step forward. Now, how much does it matter that some of these structures that are used to test the rays are done in hardware rather than software? Well, basically it's 300% 
performance improvement when you do it in hardware compared if you were doing it uh, in just inside the software. And here you can see inside of the ray tracing unit, the RTU, there are these two structures that are supported. Again, come from the Vulkan uh, API called RT Ray Box and RT Ray Triangle. Basically talking about working out whether the ray hits a particular box and inside that box whether it hits a particular triangle. Now, of course, the real proof is going to be in the eating. In other words, when we actually see this inside of smartphones and there are titles available that add in the ray tracing. Now, we saw a kind of similar kind of thing happening on PC. We saw kind of games saying they've added in the ray tracing support, and that certainly does help with the fidelity and the eye candy. And it'll be interesting to see what happens in the mobile space. Now, it is a bit of a chicken and egg situation here. Developers can't start rate writing ray tracing enabled games and there's no devices that support it uh, obviously they are preparing for this and they know it's coming because because arm works with all of the big game developers and the tools so that's unity and unreal and so on and so on so there's certainly things coming down the pipeline what they are when they will appear we don't know but it will be really interesting to see actually what developers can do with this new technology now there are other improvements inside of the engine for example uh, there is improvement in the fma that's the fuse multiply add and so they've been able to increase the size of the fuse multiply add core by just a little bit but then double the performance so they've put in more transistors they've done more uh, stuff but actually you can get twice the performance without doubling the area so that's one thing they've done to improve the performance of the uh, the uh, GPU. Now the next thing of course is variable rate shading and variable rate shading is something that's been available on other platforms and also in other GPUs for quite a while but basically the idea is is that you can tell the GPU well this is over at the edge of the scene this is over something that's happening in the background we don't need to apply quite so much computing power to it but you could imply the computing power please to this thing here which is right up in front clearly visible and we want the highest fidelity and the highest uh, kind of frame rate and being able to do that you can actually improve the frame rate and improve the power efficiency so here you can see an example of where there is this game here that's the top picture shows you what it looks like without variable rate shading then the add variable rate shading you can say that the red parts actually aren't quite so important so don't apply so much uh, to it and then you, in the finish there you can see actually you know it looks just as good uh, it looks just as nice but actually it didn't have to render quite so much which means it was faster better frame rate and also used less energy so of course when we talk about mobile when we talk about having to use our devices on the go uh, it's got a limited energy supply because of the battery but yet we still want to be able to play good games on it this is a technology that will help with that a lot so as I mentioned, the Mali G715 is basically the same processor, but without the uh, ray tracing. As you can see here, it comes between seven to nine cores, again, based on the same Valhal uh, GPU architecture. And when you get down to the Mali G615, exactly the same thing again, except for this time, it is less than seven cores, but basically the same uh, design. Now, the way the market is split up at the moment, Qualcomm have their own GPU, Samsung are using AMD's GPU, but MediaTek are using uh, ARM's GPUs. So it'll be interesting to see next year a new Dimensity processor with the Cortex-X3, the A715, and the Immortalis G715, which include ray tracing. And because it includes ray tracing, it'll be interesting to see whether other chip makers are interested in using ARM's GPU now because of these new features that it can bring. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains, and I also have a monthly newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.